Hi, welcome to Healthy Alternatives, where we explore complementary and alternative like health, lifestyle, and other lifestyle choices that promote and enhance human health. I'm your host, Lauren Servin, and our guest tonight is coming back to visit us. Yes, second Joanne, time. Joanne Pensieri, who is... Pensiera. Pensiera, excuse me, again. <laughs> It's okay. It's uh, an A, not an E. And, it's okay. And, and you are a Reiki master. I'm a Reiki master, yes. I'm a Reiki master. So, you know, um, Reiki, I think people have some preconceived ideas about Reiki, about mm -hmm. what it is. And, you know, it usually involves someone lying on a table. Mm -hmm. And the Reiki practitioner, a Reiki master... Works on them. Yeah. Works on them. Um but there's a realm to it that I think what, what I'd like to do tonight mm -hmm. is, is discuss in greater detail. Mm -hmm. it, um, and that really is like the part of Reiki that is its energy. Mm. And it's not so much like we have this sort of an intellectual awareness of energy. We understand what it does. It gives us power and light. And we most people are coming to an awareness that our bodies are really electrical circuits. That's how we are animated. Right, right. Um, but this energy has distinctive pathways in the body. Mm -hmm. um, how that energy moves through our body is not just the result of the, a biochemical thing. Right. But there's sort of this unseen, un, maybe, un, known portion of our lives that really is at the base of of Reiki and mm -hmm. the and the activity that you do. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that, Joanne, <laughs> because I think you're in a in a greater position mm. to sort of explain like what what animates us mm. as as human beings. You know, we're we're more than just a sack of cells and and biochemical pathways. That there is this sort of animating life force, mm -hmm. and I know that um, that is the basis of of Reiki. Right. And you yourself, you, you are a Reiki master, mm -hmm. but you have your own unique set of gifts right. and outlooks that you mm -hmm. also use right. in your in your practice mm -hmm. and you're helping people so right. we we would like to explore that in in greater detail well let me explain to you a little bit about what reiki is it's a gentle laying on hands healing technique mm -hmm. so i can just just go over here and put my hands just like this or i can touch your shoulder or put my hands like this and it's a natural phenomena what happens is um i call in the reiki masters now, and when you say you call in the Reiki masters, is this my understanding that these would be sort of like benevolent forces in the universe that well, uh, assist you in your healing? Or Dr. Uh, Mayako Yusui discovered uh, Reiki back in the 1800s, okay. and he actually... Uh, and he when, was a medical doctor? No, or? no, no. He wasn't a medical doctor, uh, not at that time. Uh -huh. And, no, he wasn't a medical doctor. What he was going, to, actually, he was going in for a 21-day um, meditation okay. on this mountain called, I think it's called Mount Karuma. And one of the meditations was to stand in a waterfall and let the water come down to the crown area. And they believed when you open up the crown that you could connect to your soul. And he had some problems he wanted to deal with, and he didn't know how to deal with it. So he sat on this rock for a few days, and one day um, when he was in the, um, actually in the waterfall, he had this light hit him, and, he, and the energy came into the crown area, hmm. and, and they called it Reiki. And then he had other... Uh, after, as the years went on, they had other, you know, teachers that trained it. And symbols were given to him at the time. And there are six symbols to Reiki. Like Reiki one, Reiki one and two is a combination of three. Reiki three and four is a combination of three. So there's six symbols that came to him. 
when you say came to him, like through this yeah. awareness, through, through the awareness, okay. energy just comes. Sometimes it's a knowingness. We don't know what we know. We just feel it. We mm. see it. We sense it. I think everyone has experienced that. Absolutely. Yeah. But some people are not always that conscious of it mm. or is afraid of it. Mm -hmm. Or you think, oh, it's yeah. just a coincidence. And, you know, there's plenty of rational people around us that will explain things away for us. But it's really hard to explain how Reiki does its magic. Mm. Because I can place my hands on someone and the energy just flows. And people can feel the change. Mm. Now, everybody is a healer. Everybody could put their hands on a person and not know Reiki, but that person would feel something. Your hands are very warm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so with Reiki, when you're trained for, uh, with Reiki 1 and 2, symbols are given to you by a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to be a Reiki practitioner, you have to be trained by a Reiki master. Reiki right, so, so let's get that uh, out too, that you know, this isn't something that... You're going to go receive Reiki and, you know, somebody took a correspondence course or mm. read a couple of books. Uh, they they receive direct instruction. Right. So it's really a lineage of healing. It is. Mm. And to me, I feel like it's a calling. I knew, I never thought I was going to do on-hands healing because uh, as a clairvoyant, I would see energy, but never knew I was going to, you know, put my hands on someone and, and get the energy that way as well. Mm. So until one day I just had a feeling uh, to experience it. And um, I had a friend of mine that was a Reiki, uh, Reiki uh, master. Her name was, uh, is Nancy Cannon, and she was my teacher. And um, I just said to her, I, I have to go through the whole thing. I have to do Reiki 1 through master program. Hmm. And somebody can do Reiki 1 and 2 and become that Reiki master. They get their certificate, and they can, they can work on others, and that's not a problem. If they want to further it and learn more, then they go beyond and learn Reiki 3 and 4. But they should give themselves a few months to a year to practice before they go into Reiki 3. Kind of like Reiki graduate school. Yeah, it is. And, and the thing is, I want to explain to the audience about this, how it works. Reiki 1 is about learning how to take care of you. You, learn this, you, you don't know the symbols yet. Yet the symbols are put in your hand by the Reiki master hmm. so they go each reiki uh reiki one two three and four um they have to go through an attunement each attunement is a higher vibration okay so reiki one you're, they're at a certain vibration two three and four and they actually can sense the difference from reiki one and reiki two the person who's right in training right so reiki one is learning about chakras Mm. in the body, the seven major chakras of the body. So Reiki 1 is kind of like nuts and bolts. Right. Of like the energy, Underst physiology. Right. Understanding say. the history of Reiki, where it came from, okay. and how it could help you. Mm -hmm. And I always believe self-care, take care of you first. Mm. To, and then once you do, then you can learn to work on others. Mm -hmm. So you need to feel the effect of what it does for you because, you know, no matter where you go, if you're not feeling well, you can actually place your own hands on yourself and just call in the Reiki. Well, isn't that wonderful? So, in other words, you, we can, like, really heal ourselves. Everybody can. Well, I, I you, you know, know, to exactly, a certain degree. Exactly, but it's almost yeah. like a very, like, practical. Yeah. You know, imagine if you had a headache or, you know, you had a muscle ache or a joint ache mm -hmm. to be able to just, yeah, you know. Well, I also think, too, it's a mindset. You have to, if you don't believe that Reiki is going to heal you, or, or not necessarily heal you, but um, help you heal, uh, then it's not going to. Well, you know, that's even true with the modern medicine. Right. And then the whole placebo, the, the nocebo right. effect and the right. placebo effect, right. that the patient really needs to have an expectation mm -hmm. of a result. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm. So Reiki 2 then is... Uh, well, two weeks later, I have them come back for Reiki 2. Reiki 2, they learn the symbols, they're, and the symbols are very sacred. I don't, I'm not even going to explain what the symbols are here because they're very sacred. So in other words, the symbols are something that one uh, discovers or learns about when they've made a commitment to right. um, this mm -hmm. particular uh, 
discipline or right. form of healing. Right. Yeah. And there's three symbols they'll learn. They need to draw the symbols. They need to understand the symbols. And then when I do the attunement at the end, I tap the symbols in the palms of their hand three times. Hmm. You know, the first symbol three times and, 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 and so on. They know what, what it is uh, now. And then I, they put their hands here afterwards. And I just let them know they're very sacred. And then I'll say, okay, now you're attuned to Reiki too. So there's other things that go on with the entombment, but that's, I don't think it's something we need to get into. But what's important is each person that I, I've trained has noticed the level of change in their body. So in other, uh, yeah, and let's talk about that, Joanne. So you, you had mentioned this personal vibration. Yeah. And, um, and perhaps maybe for the, for the people watching, uh, and, and stop me if I'm wrong, but, you know, imagine yourself on, like, you know, those days when you're just, everything's great. You know, you're mm -hmm. feeling on top of the world, you know, you're, you look good, you feel good, and, um, if you really kind of try to feel what that feels like internally, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So is that what you're talking about with this sort of level of vibration that it's just sort of like this, mm. Energy or what? It's, it's what hard is to describe the energy. Um, when I'm working on someone, they'll tell me, I feel um, like a tingling sensation going on. Hmm. Or there's a gurgling sound in their stomach. Really? And that means it's the chi in the body moving. Oh. So one lady kept saying to me, I'm sorry my stomach is growling. She said, but I'm not hungry. I said, it, it's, it's, you're not, I know you're not hungry. It's the chi. So when the chi, when the, when it's gurgling sound, it means the chi is moving and the body's very happy. It's really? flowing. Oh. It's flowing. And it's interesting. Once I place my hands on someone, they'll say to me, well, I feel that you're down at my feet, even though you're at my shoulders. And I'll say to them that the Reiki will go where it's needed. So okay. if even though I'm up in the shoulder area, it will go down to other parts of the body as well. In fact, it will go into various parts of the body when I'm just in one area, which I find that interesting. Hmm. Because people will say to me, you know, a client will say to me, well, I notice that my right shoulder is, is really warm, but I know you're over here, and yet my foot, I feel like someone's there. Right. So obviously there's Reiki masters, and I don't know how many Reiki masters there are, um, but they're Reiki masters, and sometimes there are angels around people uh, for support and guidance, you know, maybe some loved ones. Really? So it's, it's really interesting. Now, when not you... all Reiki masters necessarily have your gifts right. of seeing and the visual right. aspect right. of seeing this energy flow. But they can feel. But they can feel it. Sometimes right. they can feel somebody in the room. Really? And it, it, it's, it's interesting. Each time a person comes in, I sometimes can sense a, a loved one next to them hmm. um, that is giving them the support to let them know it's going to be okay. When they're going for a healing yeah, session. Yeah, because many people come for many different reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, usually people right. are suffering. And, right. right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I help people emotionally and phys with their emotional and physical challenges. Mm. And Reiki is about not necessarily physically healing. It's all about emotional healing first. Mm. Right. So that's and then the that's physical body heals after that. Right. So there's an emotional charge. Yeah. And we've, we, I think we're all very familiar now uh, in the past at least five to ten years, mm. of this mind-body connection. Right. But it's really more than mind, mm. isn't it, Joanne? Mm. It's more like uh, spirit, emotional, yeah. uh, mind-body connection. Yeah. There's almost like three components, not just the two. Right, right, right. And and I think that's hard for some people to, to grasp. Mm. But, you know, uh, they... They feel that, you know, that's in the realm of the spiritual, the religious. Um, but this isn't a dogmatic thing. Mm. It, it's And it's really sort of a, an explanation mm -hmm. um, and more of an, an, I guess you could say, an intuitive awareness of, of what's going on. Well, would, it definitely that? heightens a person's intuition a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's, it's hard to... to 
put into words we about don't have energy. The vocabulary there really in our is a, it's, it's a knowingness. Mm. It's like beyond words, right. really, right, Joanne? Right. It, it's like when someone comes to me and they're laying down. Sometimes I don't want to know what they're coming to me for, mm. because I want to just scan their energy just to see where there's some hot spots, if you will. Mm -hmm. I sometimes can see something, sometimes I can feel it. So I'll give you an example. Before I came here, I had a client that came to me for Reiki, and she said it was okay to talk about her because I always like to get people's permission. And she said to me, there's some element of resistance going on in her body, and she felt it was in her knees. So as... Um, her left knee. So when I was working on her left knee, I can feel the heat. There was some kind of maybe inflammation going on. Mm -hmm. Now I have a pendulum that I check the chakras in the body and the knees just to see if they're open. And you can definitely tell that the left knee was not. So there was some element resistance. What she did was she, she, she started focusing on of the process of healing. So she set her intention that she wanted to let this go, whatever it is that she was holding on to. So I always tell people, set your intention of what you would like to have done today. If you want to let it go, then let it go, and I'll set the same intention. Hmm. So it's all about intention. Well, isn't that so different from what we're used to? Because, mm. I mean, we're sort of, we go to the doctor, and, you know, we are told what's wrong with us, and they, we get some medicine or some procedure, and it might work. <laughs> Right. You know, so as patients, we have like absolutely no power at all, mm. and but yet we do. Well, we do. We just that's not being instilled in us, maybe necessarily. It's changing. Mm. So, in in how it's changing too is a lot of hospitals are accepting Reiki now. Well, which is wonderful. I know um, that uh, for people that are undergoing cancer treatments, they, there's a lot of Reiki work. Oh, it's just And it's wonderful. actually been recognized, what, by the American Cancer Society right, as yeah. a modality. Yeah, So, Absolutely. you know, you break through that seal of approval, there has to be something... And they're training nurses, to too. ...to it. Mm -hmm. Right. I've had right. some nurses come to me for training. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of different hospitals, Hartford Hospital, St. Francis, Middlesex, mm. you know, Griffin Hospital. I mean, it goes on and on. There's a lot of hospitals are very open. So I tell um, my client if they're going in for um, an operation, whatever kind of operation it is, see if they have a Reiki practitioner on board. They do have the healing uh, done beforehand and see if you can have it done afterwards. Yeah, pre and uh, post-op yeah. uh, session. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And they did notice a difference. Mm. Sometimes a client will come to me before their operation mm. and then afterwards they'll come to me. So I tell them, whatever works best for you. Do it. Do it. And they have so it notices. is about being open. Yes, you have to be open and just surrender. Just kind of just close your eyes and just let go. Mm. And sometimes it's not always easy, you know, to uh, to let things go. So um, the more open you are, the more that you're going to allow yourself to receive this energy. Right. You know, and it's and it's great. Um, but if I can just tell you about this lady, when she came in afterwards, when she, I was done with her, she noticed that she can move her left her leg, leg yeah. a little more. Mm -hmm. And you can see the difference in her face. So this is what she said to me. She had more clarity. She was a lot more relaxed. She felt balanced and re-energized. Hmm. But most people do. So I got the words from her. She said it, it's like her, her thought process had changed, hmm. where she was more positive mm -hmm. than negative. Hmm. And I just have people focus on their breathing and then set your intention. And then I just allow, you know, the divine light to come through to me, the Reiki healing to come through to me. And just I just kind of go with it. Mm -hmm. And I just trust wherever I'm supposed to be, it'll go where it needs to go. What's interesting, the hot spots that I notice, I can see sometimes if, there, if a person comes to me that has uh, discomfort or disease in the body, I can see where it is. And when you work on that particular area, sometimes, um, let's say if somebody has a tumor, Mm -hmm. um, there was a client of mine had a tumor, and it was able to. I was able to help shrink that. Really? But that's because she believed that you could. That, that, you, could. that you could. Now, did did you know? Did I get rid of it all? No, of course not. 
but obviously things happen for a reason. She needed to go through this to learn, to grow, and so on. But I found it interesting each time I work with someone, I learn a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. I learn a lot about the energy itself, and I just trust it. Mm. And mm. because of the feedback, feedback that I get afterwards, people just feel so much better about themselves. The process stays well, with plus them. You can, it, you can see yeah. the energy, too. Well, so e if you, you could see. I mean, if you somebody, know, somebody's coming in and the energy's this way, and, right. you, and then it's the way it should be. Well, you would recognize it as well, because if once they come out of the Reiki room, you can see the difference. Mm. The person's like... <laughs> They're just so relaxed yeah, yeah. because they just let go. They just mm. surrendered. And we always have to be so uptight. Well, you I, know? I do think that that concept of surrender is... Worse. Well, you know, our world today. Yeah. Is, you know, who wants to surrender? It's kind of scary. But it's a mindset, too. Yeah. If you have a positive um, mindset... Right. That will change the cells in the body. Uh, it would just change everything. Well, they, yeah, people they say who have more optimistic attitudes have Has better everything to do with it. Outcome, yes. And actually, even live longer. You do right. Yeah. You know. So really, in in your viewpoint of of how you're seeing. Uh, mm -hmm how our, our human lives are in the universe. Um, we're really manifestations of this divine energy, mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we don't always realize it. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, most of us can't see it. Or we're on neutral. What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, sometimes people are walking around, they're just on neutral. They're just not Coasting. aware. Yeah. Right. They're just not aware of the gifts that they have inside themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have that ability to tap into the unknown. And is that when you, so then when you talk about... Intuition. The training that the, that you, you give people mm -hmm. and this uh, raising their vibration. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shifts you out of neutral. Is that what's Your happening? Your energy changes. It's, it's like after you have... A Reiki treatment. So before and after. So you have, before you go in, you know what your energy feels like. Mm -hmm. And then you have a Reiki treatment. Then you feel, wow, I feel really good. Mm. So your energy shifts. And each time that you have a Reiki treatment, your energy keeps shifting. Mm. And you're feeling better because you're letting go. And you're allowing your emotional body to heal. Because mm. sometimes there's anger that's stored in the body. Sometimes somebody has trouble with their liver. It's usually something to do with anger, mm -hmm. you know, and so on. And I'll let them know there's something going on here. And sometimes I can tell them what the anger is about. Sometimes really? I can't. Yeah. But some people I could do that. It just, you know. So in other words, you can just almost read that like you could... See that they had brown eyes or something. Yeah, because that's a gift. That's that's my that's gift. Your gift. But not everybody that obviously does Reiki right. will do that. Right. But they they'll feel certain things. I can see colors around mm -hmm. the person. You know. So some people are maybe even like emp empathic in that right. way. Right. That they can sort Empaths of. Empaths you know. really feel the energy of others. I wouldn't consider myself an empath though. Um, I'm just. More very kinesthetic. I could feel the energy, but I know how to deal with it. Mm. Like um, I knew, I think yeah, maybe some people are empath empathic and they just they think hand. they're crazy. I know they're picking up. Uh, why do I feel this way? Well, you're empathic, of course. That's why I want the people that have come to me that I've noticed that they're empaths. I do tell them what they can do to help themselves. Mm. You know, and they're just so they're just so sensitive, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm very sensitive too. But I've learned to shield myself so I won't feel the pain of that particular person. Mm. And sometimes it's kind of challenging, but I I call in you know the universe, the the divine to to protect me. I call mm -hmm. in Archangel Michael for protection, and well, you know, so it's on. funny as we're sitting here talking because now the Reiki, this particular individual is Japanese. Mm -hmm. But Japanese as, Buddhist, a yeah. Japanese Buddhist. But as you're explaining um, what the the healer mm -hmm. uh, feels and experiences, it's almost very similar to um, the lives of the saints. Mm. You know, as a child, I you know I was raised Catholic, and I you know I I just read about the lives of the saints. I mean, it was like something that you did, and they all seem to have these. Like gifts, 
you know, they, you know, like St. Francis heard mm. things. And I mean, even Jesus, I mean, you know, he right. healed people. So this is really, it's not like a, you have to be Asian or, <laughs> right? right? Or, well, so it's cross cultural, really. And maybe it's called different things in different cultures, but it's that same ability to have that intuitive awareness mm. and that sense. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, taking it further, learning how to... It's just trust ...to harness it and, right. and help others with it, right? Yeah, right. exactly. You just have to trust it. Mm. It's all about trusting. You know, it's, it's a knowingness, it's a feeling, and you just have to go with it. Once you allow your left brain to get in there and try to analyze it, that's when you get yourself in trouble. And I think that that's where a lot of people probably find themselves, yeah. especially here in the United States, because, you know, we're a highly mm. scientific, uh, technological, yeah. mathematical. I, not that there's, I'm not criticizing that, but, you know, that's just one right. half of our, mm. oh, high, of our awareness. And and I think that's sort of, you know, since since uh, you know the industrial revolution and and the advent of uh, you know modern science, we've mm -hmm. we've just sort of given up uh, these other parts of ourselves, this other kind of human wisdom mm -hmm. that um, you know can really help us, and that and that truly is what you do. Yeah, yeah. I um, I just love what I do. I'm very. I feel very. Uh, blessed that I could help others heal themselves. Hmm. You know, I just, just the conduit, the energies comes through me and it's up to them to accept the healing. I, yeah, and I you think know? that whole vernacular healing, people, you know, have maybe a, a negative connotation that mm -hmm. it's sort of a hocus pocusy, laying on the hands, faith healing, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's quackery, but, um, you know, the more and more people are experiencing it. So how much more scientific can you get than that? That, you know, you've got your data points, people right. getting this treatment, and they're seeing a result. So well, what's, the, you know... People are getting... The response I get from people that call me, we're the last resort. Energy healers they are the last resort. They tried everything They else. tried everything, and then... What's interesting is when they come on, you know, maybe every two weeks or every three weeks, some people will say, I don't, my medication, I don't no longer, I, not that they no longer need to take the medication, but they don't need to take as much. Mm -hmm. Their blood pressure has gone down, so on and so forth. Mm. So there's, their stress level is handled in a healthier way. Mm -hmm. And where they were taking medication to control it, it was masking it. Mm. To some degree, so yeah, energy energy healers are the last that people go, but yet find it very rewarding and want to continue. Mm. Mm. So people come to me for many reasons, and a high percentage is anxiety, terrible anxiety mm. that people have. And not only do I help, I mean, I do that with hypnosis, but sometimes they want to come in for the Reiki just to see if they can calm their breathing technique, you know, like a breathing technique that will help them. Uh, many people have anxiety and sometimes don't know where it came from because they're like this. So again, when I'm not your typical Reiki master, <coughs> Reiki masters are shown a certain way how to do a healing. I just kind of go with the flow. I use my gift. I sometimes do like a self-hypnosis, working with them as, um, talking with them as I'm working on them. Mm-hmm. You know, I work with, you know, children, you know, 10, 12 years old, and I have them focus on something that makes them feel very joyous. Hmm. You know, so they, they're not focusing on their pain that they're going through or whatever it may be. So each person that comes in, it, I'm going to be working with them differently. Right. It's what fits that person. It's a very individualistic. It, it, it really is. So it's not formulaic at no, all. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Now, is that true with all Reiki or is this in, in, with your particular... Because you are you are dealing, I mean, you know, and I think we need to keep repeating that, you know, not only have you had the training in how you feel energy, but you were born with this ability yes. to yeah. see vibrational energy right. in the form of color or what, what else do you see, Joanne, besides color? Is it just like sort of a hazy thing? That Sometimes you think? I see an outline of 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 energy 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll see multiple colors just like sparks. Shooting out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when you were saying a vibration, I, when I place my hands on somebody, sometimes my hands shake mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. vibrate when the energy comes through. Not, it, it, it used to a lot. Now I'm able to control a little bit because it was going like this. And it had a lot to do with how it was coming in until I had to learn how to kind of control the energy flowing in. Hmm. That's how sensitive I was to the energy. So, and, and what's also so in other words, your hands were shaking because you were getting the energy. Right, the energy was the out coming, coming from the crown. Here. Right, and then yeah, yeah. So you really, yeah, you can imagine how that would right. make your hands shake. So yeah. it wasn't like energy coming from the person. No, no, right. not at all, right. not at all. In fact, people will say to me, "Do you ever get tired?" Yeah, I do say, you? Never. Hmm. You know why? If I'm re I'm receiving it and it's and it's coming to me out my hands mm -hmm. and I'm helping them, I'm never tired. I'm getting the, the healing as well. Mm. So I could I could do I could see ten clients just for Reiki alone and not be tired. Wow! Because uh, it's you're not you're it's it's going through you and you're getting the healing at the same time as they are. Right, which is nice. So the healing. You're not saying that you're the healer, right? I'm. It's the I'm the conduit of the divine of healing. The healing. Yeah, yeah. And so sometimes when so we're really what you're saying, Joanne, is uh, we are immersed in healing energy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, you know, gee, you know, if we would just realize that, we would all be a lot better off, wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why the mindset is changing. Mm. People's mindset are changing. If you start focusing on what you want out of life instead of what you don't want, mm. you are emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, as well as physically, feel better. Right. So yeah, it's, I... it's changing the old beliefs. If you're very negative... I don't have much in life. I don't think anybody will want me. Well, then that's true. The law of attraction is what you put out. It's got to come back. Well, it's almost too. Yeah, I think I think we've all experienced that. Like, yes, of course. Um, you know, if you think something bad's going to happen, or you know, you're putting all your it energy kind of to does. that. And then some people say, "No, I knew it was going to happen." Yeah. I was like, "Well, maybe you made it happen because right. you're thinking it mm -hmm. so much." Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it's what you're putting your attention on. Right. So it's like learning how to, yeah. gee, can Reiki help people with mm. that? <laughs> that basic yeah. negativity, well, you know, expecting the other shoe to drop all the time. I, I like to add a diff different things into the Reiki session because it's it's personalized for each person. Mm -hmm. So um, when they, like I said, when they come in, I might do a little bit of breath work with them uh, if I'm being uh, impressed to do that. Um, so you kind of get like, okay, so like, let's say uh, I would walk in or someone else and, um, you, and you say you don't like to know. I really don't. Sometimes mm -hmm. people tell me, but I tell them, don't say anything to me. Yeah, because maybe even too, the person's coming in, they might think, ah, it's this. Yeah. When, you this know. It could be something else. It could be something else that maybe they're not even ready yet to admit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's going to be a diversion if you, you know, mm -hmm. chase that other avenue. But, okay, so they come in and you just get like maybe in, I think, some of our viewers probably have experiences too that like like that gut feeling like mm. this is what it is it's just like a knowing yeah and usually as i'm scanning the body <coughs> excuse me as i'm scanning the body i can see, sense and feel inflammation mm. and do you see it Sometimes, mm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it varies, but most of the time I do see it. Uh, sometimes, um, I don't know, sometimes I might get a color. And if it's really, really, um, like, I, I'm just thinking of a time where I was just working on this client and I said to her, I noticed some inflammation in your stomach. And I told her, I said, I think it's something that you've been eating that's causing it. And she said, I usually don't eat this. And I told her what it was. She says, well, that's true. I've been eating it for three days and I know I shouldn't have. Oh. So, so I felt, I saw whatever she was eating, which I forgot what it was, that was connected to the inflammation. Mm -hmm. But see, people can do that too. They, I try to teach people how to connect to their body. Mm. So if you're, if so you're, so in eating, other words, you don't have to go through the Reiki training. I no, mean, if you're a patient, no, no. If someone comes to you as a, right. as a patient, right, you are instructing them on really self care, right? 
And self it's all about self awareness and self care. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's number one. Mm -hmm. And nobody's going to tell you. You need to listen to your own body. When you go to the doctor and they said, well, you know, um, if you go in for a specific reason and he says, well, I can't find it, they're expecting the doctor to give them the answer. Right. And I understand that. But well, if they that's kind of how you were instructed. Right. You know, you're going right. to the doctor to find out what's wrong with you. <laughs> and if you can't, if they can't find it, it's not physical. Mm. They've taken x-rays. They've done this and that. And they can't find it. It's because it's emotional. It's the emotions that are, are connecting to certain parts of the mm -hmm. organ of the body, you know. And well, and even I mean, it, it could. Too, well, I mean, we do know that certain emotions do cause physical oh abs symptoms. So absolutely, you know, like let's say, it, and that would be the extreme pathology of that. Right. Um, so you know, if someone maybe is even a little more sensitive, they're going to be feeling something before the body's just deteriorated from this emotional. Mm -hmm. Thing. So, mm. everything you, in your view, uh, illness is caused from uh, emotion. Yeah. Right. I mean, short of, you know, getting hit by a bus or well, if having an accident or something. Somebody, you know, has gone to a doctor, has gone to the doctor and said, the doctor says, well, I don't know what's going on. Well, what's been going on in your life? Well, I've been stressed. And what is stress? Yes, yeah, stress, that's a big umbrella. Of it really is a big umbrella. <laughs> what right, is stress? Right, exactly. So, when I hear stress and... I see in their body, I immediately say to them, breathe. Mm. Stress to me connects to fear. Mm -hmm. There's, it's a resistance in the body. Mm. So when you learn how to breathe pro you know, properly and when you catch yourself reading stress. <sighs> yeah, we tend to not breathe right. when we're stressed. Right. Now I get. Or our breathing becomes erratic, shallow, right. or loopy. Right. I get overwhelmed easily and, and I know a lot of people do. So I know what happens to me if I don't do something about it. My energy is just. So I have to focus on breathing. It's going to be okay, because if I have a lot going on, mm -hmm. I become overwhelmed. And I wonder if that's why sometimes when people uh, are stressed out, they smoke a cigarette, because it's sure. like you're breathing. It, it's a regular and it doesn't thing. relax them. They think well, it does. Well, it does. It, but it, I think that. Probably the relaxing part is them. the actually breathing. <laughs> you're finally breathing. It's just, unfortunately, you're breathing uh, yeah. something that's got toxic chemicals in it. Well, it's just like when someone comes to me for smoking, for, you know, for hypnosis, uh -huh. for smoking, and I'll, I'll say to them, why do you know, why do you think you smoke? Well, it, it relaxes me. I used to think that years and years ago when I was a smoker, I didn't smoke for that many years, but when I did, I said the same thing. I said, maybe it just grounds me. It never relaxed me. Hmm. I thought it would. And it wasn't that. Mm. So it's, again, how you look it's at it. It's our, ex once again, it's yeah. our expectation. And I think, you know, if we expect mm -hmm. um, a result, uh, we're unblocking something mm -hmm. in ourselves mm -hmm. that we'll get the result. Is that really? I mean, that's pretty much it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, you know, it's almost like, and, and, and listen, believe me, wouldn't we all really just want that to be so? Why do we have such a hard time believing that, Joanne? Well, we get in our own way. I don't know. Yeah. You know, maybe other people may say, oh, don't believe in that. You know, Do that's you think, a, but even though you think maybe we just don't, we're, we feel like we're not worthy to have that happen to us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Worthiness like is a big, I, is know, a big I, point. I really, I'm a real... You know, I'm not the nicest person. Why do I deserve? Exactly. You know, just because I want it, why should I get everything? Yeah, we have a million and one reasons why we... Excuses. Yeah. I call them excuses. And it's really like self... I mean, and I know this sounds really touchy-feely, but it's really like loving ourselves, isn't it, Joanne? Enough to want to... Right. It's about loving who you are. ...abundance and... Right. Abundance in health or emotional well-being or mm -hmm. even our material right. goods. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's about, you're right, it is about worthiness. Mm -hmm. If we feel like we're not worthy of all of this that other people have, we're not going to receive it. Right. But everybody is, you know... Um, and Reiki can help people with that, Julian. Oh, yeah. Sort of well, develop that, that sense of and well-being worthiness enough. They get to connect more to their um, 
their true self when they come for Reiki. So true self. Now, what, Soul. what would you... Authentic self. Authentic self. Connecting to who you really are. Mm -hmm. And when you are in that relaxed state and you are in that moment of bliss, um, joy, whatever it may be, you're one with yourself. Mm. And so there's nothing else that means anything to you but you connect to who you are and you can heal and you can feel your worthiness you can feel your joy you can feel a lot and then they stay with that for a moment and they forget about it after a while mm -hmm. but if you practice that every day going into your heart and soul and focus on the feeling of what you want to feel it's unbelievable what um uh the feeling that you get so if you're experiencing joy and you want to feel it practice it every day for a few minutes a day and then it becomes a habit, and you will always feel blissful. So you're training these new beliefs. You're training yourself to feel that bliss. feel good. Yeah, because yeah. you know sometimes I go backwards and then I move forward, and little baby steps, and and that's okay. But I catch myself, mm -hmm. and it just happened this past weekend, and I realized on Sunday I said no, you have to turn that around and focus on what you want to feel, not what you are feeling. Mm. And it started shifting for me, and I started feeling better. So mm. this blissful feeling, and once again, like going back to the lives of the saints, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, I remember reading about, you know, this particular saint was in a static, and I'm like, wow, you know, what is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but that's that bliss that um, yeah. you were, ta that you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. That they felt that in their lives, mm -hmm. they would have these ecstatic feelings and then some of some of these individuals uh, had great capabilities mm. too to actually even help others yeah well then then the, the miracles are associated with them right right and 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 essentially i mean you know what what you would be doing just from touching someone or focusing on them and, and it, it is it could be considered miraculous mm -hmm. Right? But I don't take the credit. Well, I don't think the saints did either, Julian. I know. <laughs> oh, but some people take the credit. Oh, right. Well, of, of that they healed that person or whatever, and I, I never take the credit for that. I'm grateful that I am the conduit. Mm -hmm. Right, the saints never did, absolutely. So there's an, an element of um, humility yes. associated with... Absolutely. And I think that's maybe very important for people who are considering... Uh, Finding a, a Reiki practitioner, mm -hmm. um, that you want to you want to see that right, Joanne, right. in mm -hmm. that in that person, that sort of um, humble humility, mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 an appreciation. Well, like draws to like, mm -hmm. so like-minded people draw to like-minded people. Oh, okay. So if you find one that's not, that's maybe a cue for you to develop some humility in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's interesting. People say, you know, if they're moving to Pennsylvania, say, you know, do you know of anybody there? No, oh, okay. So I just tell them, just look around, listen and follow your gut feeling. And you'll find. You'll just know. Oh. You can have five people in front of you. Which one are you drawn to? To, to, to do to the healing. You. And you'll just, just listen to your intuition. Your intuition will guide you. Yeah, and I think that's real difficult for, um, maybe even more difficult for uh, men than women yes. to trust. But you know, it's nice. Men are starting to be more open to it, mm. and they get emotional, and I love it mm. because they're allowing themselves to open up, and showing their vulnerability is is a part of healing. Just love to see men doing more of the healing. Mm -hmm. They really are accepting of it more. Yeah, because, you know, unless, and, and and I would like your opinion on this, um, if we don't uh, face uh, that, whatever it is that we're feeling vulnerable about, then we're constantly avoiding it, and, and, and mm -hmm. that contributes to uh, illness, too, absolutely, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. That's why it's good just to surrender. You know, we all have fears, mm. and fears block, and that's really a resistance. And when you just focus on what you want to feel, the fear is not going to be there. If you focus on love, the fear is not going to be there. Mm. And the more you focus on self-love and loving yourself, I love me, like putting your hand on your heart and saying, I 
love me. I love me. If you do that a few minutes a day, a couple minutes, do it ten times, you know, that more you know, in the morning, whatever it may be, you will actually start feeling how much you will love you. It'll just shift. Mm. All of a sudden it's like boom. Oh, I feel really good. I really, really do love who or, I am. Or yeah, you re like you yeah. look in the mirror. Yeah, and, and you, you have this like glow. Who you say. Right, you, there's a glow about you, yeah. and people say, "Gee, I noticed there's a glow about you." It's because of what you feel inside. Mm. It's kind of nice to to people to see that when I see with people when they have a Reiki healing done or or whatever they've gone through, and they are going through a spiritual, you know, evolution or change and, and transformation. Wow, you can see a big change. So. Really, this whole thing, I mean, if we can impart um, a few ideas. I mean, we've been all over the place tonight in our conversation. Yes, we have. <laughs> but, it, but truly, I think we're trying to discuss something that you can't pin down. No, that's true. Right? Yeah. Um, so, like, let's say you're home and, you know, you're not feeling well or you've got this chronic pain in your back or joints or you have headaches all the time or um you know maybe you've got sinus issues or you know you've just tried everything and you know, maybe you're just not feeling really that joyful in your life right you know and and of course you might think well why should i feel joyful I, uh, you know things have happened to me but and that's situational and of course reiki could certainly benefit you from even if or, you know it's situational but sometimes people just they just don't know why they don't feel happy. And then, then they feel bad, like, I have so much to be grateful for, but yet I'm still not happy. You can change it if you're not feeling well. As I was just telling you over the weekend, I wasn't feeling well. And once I started changing my thought process and the feeling of what I wanted to feel, then I started feeling better. Hmm. So when you say feeling, you're talking... You physically you're, and emotionally you're, feeling you're, you're, you're emotionally we're feeling right. well. So somebody has back problems. And most of the time people have trouble with the lower part of the back. And that's where, uh, in the chakras of the body, there's, there's seven of them. This, it's the second chakra. And that's where fear lies. Oh. So what happens is if, um, if they're fearful of something in particular, it's going to affect that particular area. Hmm. And especially if they have an injury, it's going to get worse. And they think about what happened or their pain in their life. That's all they'll think about is pain. But if you send love, I know it's going to sound crazy. If you send love to that part of the body that's feeling the pain, it will start feeling better. So in other words, and that's something that you do right. as the Reiki And I healer, teach But the them. individual can do that to themselves. Absolutely. You don't have to know Reiki to do that. To just send that love. Mm -hmm. To send that love. Right. The mind is so powerful. Mm. And if we really believe that we could do this, this, and this, we can. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I know that, you know, um, there's a lot of effort these days to find that single kind of uh, animating force in the universe. Um, and uh, I think, uh, from what I'm hearing from you, that you could call that love, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And not necessarily that whole like romantic right. love type of love. thing, but that love that I th think we all have experienced in our lives. Um, and sometimes I think it feels so good that people almost feel guilty about <laughs> feeling that good. I know. And then they're like, what the heck was that, man? <laughs> you know? And they just let it go. Yeah. They, they're afraid of it. They don't know what they're to do They're afraid with it. of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's why, it, it, that's why it's important that when you meditate, you take that five minutes, take your deep breaths, and focus on what you want to feel mm -hmm. for the day. Because it is all about a feeling, isn't it? Absolutely. It starts with a feeling. It's all about a feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was on vacation uh, last summer, and there was a, kind of a boathouse um, on, the, on the pier, and, um, and there was like a little handmade sign. It was quite large. But it, and, and, and it said, it's all about a feeling. And I thought, that is exactly right. Mm -hmm. And it's just like how the, 
you know, the universe does send us these messages right. all the time. Always. And we think, oh, it's a coincidence, you know. But, but truly, yeah. what, I mean, I think maybe, like, I would it's just ask the people at home, just really maybe for the next couple of days, when you're hit with stuff like that, don't be so ready to toss it out the window, right. you know, like, pay attention to it, right, even, Joanne? Yeah, even if you're driving your car... And you, and there's a sign, there's, there's a car in front of you that there's a, a, a specific saying that connects exactly. to what, it, there's always, exactly. there's always signs everywhere. There are signs everywhere. Uh, everywhere. And I think sometimes when, I mean, here's a way to look at it in case you're thinking these two women are crazy. <laughs> but like, let's I say. I already know I'm crazy. But let's <laughs> say you are really struggling with something yeah. that's causing you pain. Mm. Well, hey. Did you ever stop to think <laughs> that's a sign and you're right. not reading the sign? Yeah. So the universe is just going to keep giving you the <laughs> same sign Until over and over and over again. So, you know, why don't you just like give it a try yeah. <laughs> and see what happens? I think life. people are starting to do that yeah. more. I've noticed that more. And, 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 and in the meantime, mm -hmm. um, you might want to consider, <laughs> you know, seeing uh, Joanne. And now, why don't you tell us where your. Uh, where you do these things. Uh, my office is uh, at 2317 Silestein Highway in Rocky Hill. And my website is www.joannetreeofhealing.com. And there's a nice picture of you here. Oh, thank you. That's me. That's you. And I have a variety of workshops that I teach as well. And I think that's fascinating. I, yeah. You know what? That, to me, is such a testament to your... Uh, dedication to what you do mm -hmm. in, is that is your willingness to empower other people to learn these things because you know let's face it you could just say look you got to come to me <laughs> every week and mm -hmm. you know pay me this money but um you know you really do want to help people i do yeah and i do it from my heart and soul yeah i want people to feel what i feel mm -hmm. and so as i grow and as i heal i teach others right well, thank you once again. Oh, thank for, you. Thank you for inviting me. For, me, for being on our program. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe you could come back and we can have sure. another rambling conversation. Or maybe I can come back and I can do the Reiki healing on you. Yeah, that would and we be. can show the audience how it's done. That, <laughs> the studio <laughs> might come up. <laughs> spontaneous combustion. But I would be happy yeah. to. Uh, yeah. I would like that. Good. Like that very much. Okay. All right. Thanks, Joanne. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thanks. Uh, good night.